Hi, this is Muhammad Imran. Linguistics is defined as the scientific study of language. Now, why do we call it the scientific study of language? Do we take language to the laboratory and we do analysis there? Not at all. Then why is it called the scientific study of language? It's a question. So we call it the scientific study of language because linguistic follows a scientific procedure or it follows a scientific method. Now you may ask question what scientific method? In a scientific method first comes observation. We observe things. Then comes hypothesis, right? After the hypothesis we collect data and we make analysis of a data, data analysis, and then we come to conclusion. And finally, the hypothesis you made earlier can be proved or can be refuted. Now, in the case of linguistic, how can we observe? Now, let's take an example. For example, uh, you are a teacher, right? And you teach to the students, they belong to different social sects or different culture setup. Now you come across and you listen one of your student and he pronounces a word screen, right? And you think that the word is screen, not screen. And after a while again you hear and he or she again pronounces another word and he or she says school instead of school she or he says school or he or she says state instead of state he or she says state or state so then you think okay that the problem is because of consonant cluster when a person says the the word is screen there is and then there is K, screen, but a person cannot pronounce consonant cluster. So he or she says sakarin or school or state instead of state, he or she says state, and instead of screen, he or she says sakarin, and instead of school, he or she says school right so the problem is where that is the problem there is constant cluster when you observe and you listen to other students they are all right other students pronounce school they say screen they say state they say sports but one of your student cannot pronounce consonant cluster so you start investigation that what may be the problem right so you start interview them you ask and you inquire that the person who says screen or the person who says a uh, state or the person who says is school or school you start investigation and you come to the conclusion that he or she belongs to Punjab or your other students they belong to Khaybar Pukhturha then you realize that the problem may be of mother tongue influence because in most of uh, uh, like uh, area of Punjab uh, there is no consonant cluster in Punjabi language while in Pashto we do have consonant cluster right in Urdu we do have consonant cluster while in Punjabi we don't have consonant cluster so that's your observation you observe it's a problem right and this problem is because of mother tongue influence and this person belongs to a particular area of Punjab that's why he or she cannot pronounce consonant cluster so this is okay your observation so what happens in a scientific procedure in a scientific method they start uh, a scientist first observe things it is a problem right so he or she starts observation the same way a linguist will observe 
he or she will start right his or her research with observation so this is observation this is a problem or let me give you another example you are uh, like in a function right or in a ceremony and there is one person that who uh, cannot pronounce four so instead of five he or she says five and instead of four he or she says four or instead of Pakistan he or she says Pakistan or instead of fan he or she says pan so for in, instead of f he or she says p and instead of p he or she says f so you observe that there are people who are all right who are okay they can differentiate between f and p while one or two people are there they cannot differentiate between f and p so you ask him or her that which area he or she belongs to and you come to the conclusion that he or she belongs to one of the region Charsatta in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa or Mardan in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa because of the mother tongue influence in most of the time in, uh, in Pashto language we don't have the sound F so if you can pronounce you are a Patan uh, you are a Pashto speaker and you're all right in F and P so that is because of the Quranic teaching or that is because of the Urdu language or that is because you have got much exposure right uh, to other people right you are not a person who stays all the time at one locality one area you go to Punjab you go to other districts of Heber Bukhtunha right or you may have spent a lot of time somewhere else right you are in uh, an environment or in a situation where all people are all right so if you can pronounce or you can differentiate where to say F and where to say P so that is because of Urdu language or that is because of Quranic teaching because in Arabic we do have the sound F and in Urdu language we do have the sound F while in Pashto language we don't have the sound F so that is another observation you observe is a problem right one or two people they say instead of f, p, and instead of p, they say f. I have my friends who belong to Mardan or who belong to Charsatta, right? And they have also the same issue. If you uh, interact with them, so where, where f come, they will say p, and where p come, they will say f, because they will say, I have a lot of print, instead of friend, they will say print. So because this act of F, there's no F in Pashto, so it is like a kind of, uh, in the early stage they have learned. And it is fossilized. This act is no F, so this act has been fossilized and now when they consciously uh, produce F or P, so they are uh, mixed up. So this is the problem right so this is observation that a linguist first of all he or she will observe that what's the problem because rest of the people are all right but one or two students or one or two people they have problem so this is okay observation now you the second step is what that you uh, start hypothesis you hypothesize now you may ask question did this happen okay constant cluster may happen because of this or this may happen because of this or the person cannot differentiate between f and p because of this because of that so what is hypothesis hypothesis is your intellectual guess right that hasn't been proved yet right you have some facts you have some solid but these facts are not proved yet you're just making an intellectual guess that this happened because of this or because of that now to prove your hypothesis what do you do you collect data 
right? You go to that particular area, for example, suppose you go to Punjab and there you interact with people and you observe that most of the people have this problem. Whenever there is consonant cluster, right? Two consonants, when they come together, right? Without any vowel sound. So they try to, to put, right? To break the syllable. We have a word like scream. So they say a scream, they're putting a there in the beginning or sakarin somewhere in the middle, right? So this is okay that you go and you observe and you realize, so you collect data, right, from Punjab. Or you go to Charsadda, you go to Mardan and there you collect data. There are how other people, right, they pronounce for and per. You collect data. And after collection of data, what you do? You start analyzing that data, right? When you analyze the data, then come you come to conclusion. You make a conclusion and the hypothesis you made earlier can be proved or they can be refuted right the hypothesis you made earlier after observation can be proved right or can be refuted so this is a scientific method what happened to a Newton he perhaps he was sitting or he was standing under a tree and an apple fall on his hat or beside him. He start observation, right? Why does an apple fall, right? Why didn't go up? Why an apple come down? Why didn't go up? That is his observation, right? And then he observes several other things, right? So he make hypothesis that this may happen because of some force. And then he comes to the conclusion that this happened because of gravitation force. So this is okay, scientific matter. He was standing, he was sitting, and an apple fall on his hat or nearby, right? He look up, he observed, right? And he, uh, uh, he made a research question. Why didn't go up this apple? Why did it come down? Right? And then he observed other things, a lot of things. That everything's okay, they, they came down, not went up. So that is okay, he collect data. And he make analysis. And then he concluded, right, that this happens because of gravitation force. He has given this a name. So this is a scientific method. When we say linguistics is the scientific study of language, so we mean that a linguist follows a scientific procedure or a linguist follows a scientific method, right? We do not take a language to the laboratory, right? You can ask questions, you can say, yes, we can take uh, phonetics and phonology, right? Phonetics, yes. So only one branch of linguistic, but other branches you cannot take to the laboratory and test, right? So it means that, okay that whenever you ask question in an interview or anywhere that why uh, define linguistic and you define that linguistics is the scientific study of language and an interviewer may ask you that why do we call it a scientific study of language? Then you can say that it's called a scientific study of language because it follows a scientific procedure. Now what is a scientific procedure? First come observation. Then you make hypothesis, you hypothesize things, and then you collect data, and then you make analysis, you conclude, and then finally your hypothesis can be proved or can be refuted. So this is a scientific method or a scientific procedure. So thank you so much. I hope you got it. Okay, then why do we call linguistics a scientific study of language? In coming video, we will define what is language. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the channel.